Skunk fam, we are so glad to be with you again today. We've got a lot of uh, messages of support from you guys. We've got some people who are trying to counter what we're saying as well, which is fine because we welcome that. Uh, what we're doing here is we're really trying to set the record straight. Um, we believe that the American cannabis narrative is flawed and even manufactured. So what we're trying to do here is get all the facts out on the table so that we can move forward as a community with the truth. So I won't talk too much. Uh, we ended off this last episode with some really a bombshell information from Joe Pietri, and he got cut short because he was traveling. So right now, what I'm going to do is hand the floor over to him, and he's going to leave start where he left off last time. So uh, what's up, Joe and Blue Skies? Uh, how are you guys doing hey, today? Man. We're doing good. Good, okay. thanks. I'd just like to say thank you to Joe again for coming back on with us. And yeah, the last show was really well received. It's got quite a lot of views already. So um, thank you very much, Joe. And I'll leave it to you to take over. Well, uh, first I want I was talking about George Cervantes the last time. You know, uh, 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 <laughs> George Cervantes is the face of, of uh, Dutch marketing fraud. So, I mean, he's, he's in the pay of Dutch Shell and Ben Dronkers and all these people. He writes what they tell him to write. Like, you, 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 uh, he, at one point, uh, he tried to uh, come out with a 15-bag bubble bag kit. I mean, uh, the, it's like was a theater of the absurd. That whole bubble bag, uh, 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 hash-making bags, that stuff all is uh, 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 the 25 micron catch bag is too porous for you to really make good hash but Cervantes was so part of that I attacked him at that uh, on that and he 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 shelved that idea in or he's from Oregon from Oregon uh, uh, he was teaching people to do 18 six in greenhouses so people who had a greenhouse outside would at, argument the greenhouse with 1,000 watt light bulbs to to uh, to replicate 18.6 outdoors when all they needed all they needed was a light bulb on in the middle of the night to keep those plants in veg. He's a he's a trained horticulturalist, or he says he is, and he didn't teach photoperiodic control. When I taught photoperiodic control and my 12 in one paradigm growing technique, which is now standard practice and now mainstream, uh 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 he was uh, 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 mainstream. When I when I taught that, all the farmers that were following George Cervantes and growing in a greenhouse were outraged, and he became like persona non grata because everybody thought they were so great in Oregon. They were the best growers in the world. Then why are you using eighteen six in a greenhouse when you only need one light bulb on in the middle of the night to keep the plants in veg? What he taught. Because he's a cop. He's, he works for the police. What he did was teach everybody a technique that made your greenhouse stand out like the, the Statue of Liberty. It was very easy to, to figure out who was growing when you have lights on in the night. But if you have an, a light on in the middle of the night for an hour and you don't even need that much, right, it's hard for them to detect. So he made everybody detect the bull. Okay. And so he taught a technique that makes no horticultural sense. Nowhere in, in, in Mother Nature does a plant get 18 hours of light. That's how I figure out if a, if a person really knows what they're doing, I'll say, okay, you're a farmer, you, you're a grower. I, yeah. How much light does a plant get in Mother Nature for photosynthesis? And what happens when that plant tanks are full how does a plant react to it they don't answer that because they don't know what they don't uh, uh, they were never taught that that was left out of the grow books photoperiodism right and they'll say all kind of, oh the the plant uh, will get 18 or will get 12 no a plant in mother nature gets less than eight hours of light for photosynthesis and then it goes into photosynthesis protection and shuts off your co2 intake so for the next four hours that you're doing dumbass, 12 and 12, the plants are already shut down where they can't even take uh, CO2 and they can't even take any nutrients. They're locked. 
So that you're putting four hours of light in, in, in flour that's useless. That's useless. So uh, uh, that's the that's the uh, 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 the uh, 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 Dutch Shell. They're coming out with products. They're coming out with BHO using butane. They're coming out with bubble bags sell, selling bag kits, uh, uh, nylon at the at the uh, at wedding dress prices. That don't work. That's not hash. They, uh, 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 so Cervantes was uh, basically a, a, a conduit for bad information, but I killed his reputation with 12 and one. That's standard operating procedure in the flower industry. That's how they grow chrysanthemums, you know? So when I did that, nowadays, you very rarely see him on the market where he's doing any talking or anything because most of the people who are real growers and are professional growers have figured out that he's full of shit. You know, so right away when I taught twelve and one, it cut down the 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 the, uh, the veg period down to where you only need thirteen hours of light. And then I did the I I've done it I've uh, done twelve and one using seven hours of light. I've used I've done twelve and one using only four hours of light to keep the plants in veg. And I've kept the pl plants in veg using a fifteen watt strobe light. They don't tell you that. They want you using your electricity. So basically, there's been so much misinformation by people like Cervantes because he's paid by Dutch marketing fraud to, to spoo what they want them to spoo so that you spend more money. The Dutch, all they teach you is spend more, grow less. Because if they would have taught you photoperiodism, not only do you have a bigger plant, you get a 30% increase in production. So when people finally caught on, and now everybody's caught on, uh, 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 they see where the fraud is coming from. That was the only way that I could break through Dutch marketing fraud is to create a paradigm that people could understand. And so I created the 12 and one paradigm and that caught on because it was, I, when I did that, I said 12-1, direct aid to all growers. So all growers who followed my, my uh, veg routine and follow my uh, flowering routine, they, they cut their uh, uh, production costs down as much as 60%. We'd like to do a whole episode, if we could, with you, Joe, where you talk about all your growing knowledge and all your different techniques. Okay, yes, all right. We'd definitely so then, like to do a full episode on that. Yes, you know that uh, uh, I sent uh, uh, I sent our friend there uh, the... the, the uh, the articles from the University of Miami. When at the University of Miami, I was in a head shop buying some papers, and uh, the 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 guy said, "Man, I showed him a, the manuscript to my book because I still was working on. I still ha I had my manuscript, but I hadn't published it yet. But I let them read it. They said, "Man, you need to go to the University of Miami, and I'll get you a, uh, where you can talk on stage." So the I, I, the head shop owner. Got was hooked up, and he had he hooked me up with this with that program, and so I showed up. And when I showed up, <laughs> I had the 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 uh, the the audience enthralled because I you know I've been on the lamb for and hiding out in Southeast Asia for twenty years. You know what I mean? Is that <laughs> so, where you met I mean, Todd McCormick? I, uh, yeah, Todd McCormick put on that show at the University of Miami. That's the oh. first time that I've ever. I've ever uh, talked in, in public. I got such resounding cheers because, you know, <laughs> talking about legalization when they're fighting a drug war was really a basic stupid topic because <laughs> there was nothing, every, everybody need to be, need to learn about the drug war then, not about making pot legal because it wasn't going to be legal for another, for many other years, you know what I mean? And that information had everybody standing on their feet cheering me. When that happened, McCormick sat, uh, put a Chinese chick in, in my, when I went to the dais to talk again, put a Chinese chick in front of me. And all she did was open and close her legs, open and close her legs to distract me while I was talking because he's a jealous bitch. And he didn't want, he, I was getting way too much attention. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sounds like but, Todd. Still, still sounds like Todd to this day. Uh, you know what they call Todd McCormick in Oregon? They call <laughs> him the Hungry Hope because 
because at the time, you know, people were growing in underground containers and they were being run with diesel generators. So he wanted to come in. He wanted to come to Oregon. Really, we feel that he came to Oregon to get people busted because he's, he's worked with the police on many, many occasions and it's, it's documented. You know, the, that uh, 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 they told us, that you're going to be growing out here and we'll help you set up, but you cannot buy your diesel fuel locally. You're going to have to get a, you're going to have to get some kind of a way to be able to buy your diesel fuel in another county. Don't buy it in this county, right? Well, he's a, you know, he started growing. He, they set him up and, and instead of listening to them, he bought uh, diesel fuel locally. So he got, everybody went down on that scene. That whole scene got shut down because Todd McCormick, you know, couldn't follow the rules. But was he sent there to follow the rules or was he sent there to expose everybody? You know? Todd McCormick has worked the, the both sides of the of the fence. Well, he works for Ben Dronkers. Uh, you know, he's a one name basis with Robert Connolly Clark and 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 uh, uh, David Watson. You know, we're going to go talk about this now. Yeah, they went on to this thing. Oh, he's a snitch. He's a snitch. He's a snitch. The only person I've ever snitched on was myself. When I came back, I fucking admitted the shit I didn't. Uh, you know, and because they, they, you know, they had that already. So I had to cooperate with them as far as what I did. You know, I never, you can never find me where I testified against anybody, wrote a statement against anybody, did anything against anybody in the history of the world, dude. And, 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 and I, and, and, uh, Canna, uh, international canographic, somebody from the old days came on and said this, if Pietri with what he knew back then would have spoken about what he did, Back then, he would have been dead. Back then, I I was involved in very very heavy stuff. I I I I I, I never I, you know I. Well, that's another episode we'd like to do also with you, Joe, if you don't mind. Is like go through kind of your personal history because like obviously a lot of younger. There's a lot of viewers... personal history that I can't talk about because. Oh no, but you know, I mean, like you, but you know, your books that you've written, yeah, the two best-selling books. Some if activities you... that I did that I I've left I I've, I left buried in my life. And I'm I'm away I'm out of that now. Yeah, you know? yeah. We, I don't mean like we want you to reveal everything about yourself. But like you know, um, like a lot of our audience may not be aware of like what you did back in the day and that kind of thing. You, I'm sure you've yeah. got a ton of interesting stories you can tell about us. Uh, yeah, no problem that to there. us. No problem there. But my, the, but uh, uh, the Watson Watson came to me at the 19th Cup when I released my. My uh, 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 Ice Wars edition, and and he and he said you blew, you know he admitted that I blew his cover, and I told him I said hey don't you think I know what the police look like? That was the only time I've ever even spoken to him, and then I've been viciously attacked by them as a some kind of snitch. There's nobody no I never tested about testified against anybody. There's no paperwork that I said anything about anybody anywhere. If I did, I'd be dead. Yeah, that's a fact, dude. That's why I I, I thank that guy from uh, uh, who went on the one on uh, International Canographic. International Canographic, uh, they flooded the world with skunk seeds. They flooded the world with hemp seeds. They fucked up everybody's grow. You know, so the 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 Watson, uh, you know. <laughs> He had the only license at Horta Farm to produce medical seeds of medical quality in the world. Yeah. Before, before uh, uh, accredited universities and PhDs. There's I mean, absolutely the no way in the how world. How the hell do you get? I thought I thought he was wanted for growing in California. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, was, there's no actually, way, there's no way, Joe, that he's not a Fed. You know, he's oh absolutely yeah, exactly. he's an out and out DEA agent. Whatever, he's a Fed. He is from the start. It's so from obvious. The start, and he he he's been undercover longer than Donnie Brasco. Are you kidding me? I know. It's crazy. It's crazy how long he stayed undercover. Now, now he's he, 
He's joined some group as a master grower, master this, master that. What he is is a master thief. They've been planning the takeover of of uh, of cannabis genetics for a long, long time. With what do you know about Phylos, Joe, when you talk in relation to this now about the takeover of cannabis and genetics and DNA sequencing, etc.? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got nine, nine uh, things that I've had sequenced at Phylos under Gold Crown Seeds. Uh, uh, I, at first, I really liked Nishan, and I thought that he was a good person because he grew up in a commune. And, and his, Is that that Mowgli kid, guy? Mowgli's an idiot. He opened, <laughs> up his, he, he opened up his mouth and said shit that he shouldn't have and pissed off the people at me uh, at phylos but also exposed that phylos weren't up to good things no but that that guy and the guy from metacinal genetics metacinal genetics those guys have been they got the guy from metacinal genetics tried to patent cannabis anything over two percent he he owns okay no but unbelievable! It's just fucking unbelievable. You know the, the it, 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 you know they 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 had to make it when 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 the patent when cannabis patents ran out for their for their uh, tinctures and basically you could go to a, to a to a pharmacy if you had a prescription and buy weed up until 1940 if you had a prescription. So uh, 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 they couldn't. They it was such an important part of the natural medicines because it cured so many different things it could be treated with it could be used for treating of so many different problems that you have medically that they couldn't release they couldn't let people know how, how easy it is to grow your own well it's almost a panacea isn't it yeah so they 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 made it illegal but cannabis being the most uh, important medicine of all time with opium you know, I mean, of all time that they couldn't control it. They, they control the opium, though, don't they? Yeah. You have so many addicts here in America that are addicted to pharmaceuticals. It's sort of funny. I mean, it's just sad. sad well, apparently sad. fentanyl is the number one cause of death in the U.S., I read recently. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, nowadays heroin is cheaper than a six-pack. Yeah. A six-pack of beer. It's cheaper than a six-pack of beer in the States. Crazy stuff. But Watson was at the lead of, of uh, you know, worked with Carlton Turner. Uh, you, you talk about David Watson, the the big criminal as well is that guy, Robert Connolly Clark. You know, uh, it got so it got to be like this. Uh, uh, they found that they find a, a, a field. It's a wild field in Pakistan. They have the Pakistani police fly in with their helicopters, and the scientist with the helicopter comes in on the helicopter, takes uh, 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 takes samples of the crops, collects the seeds, and then they burn the crop. Damn. They've been doing that all since for 20, 30 years, maybe even longer. They've gone all over the world and burned crops. You know, uh, 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 I brought Angola red back to Angola. Because, you know, uh, you know, uh, we have to bring that stuff back and give it back to Mother Nature so that Mother Nature can do the thing so we can have the pure medicine. They've been taking the medicine out of weed and just leaving the THC in there with, that makes you stupefied and gives you a couch lock and makes you, could, you might lose your motor control and it makes you stupid. The smart yeah. weed that we got from land races, sativas in the, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, people don't even know about today. No, I know. This is what I've been struggling against with everybody because all the genetics I've put out are very old school from the late 60s, 70s and 80s from old time or one. People yeah. today just don't realize how in the last 20 years, but it started with the Dutch in my opinion, started with the Dutch always trying to drive for the highest THC, numbers that they could say they've you know they can sell more seeds based on potency and then it even got took over by cali it's still going on now as far as i can see and they just don't see that once you're breeding for high thc past 20 percent it's to the exclusion of all the other cannabinoids and you're losing a lot of the terpenes there's only sort of about one profile is dominant lately and people have got no idea that there used to be a diversity of effects motivating yeah. weed your eye exactly. the day brightness the ones that warm you up beyond the eyes and you know exactly um, 
Exactly. Have you tried to like Malawi Gold, Joe? When you were talking about that um, energetic strain the other day, it just made me immediately think of uh, Malawi Gold that I've, I've smoked that is super energizing. I, I, I have Malawi Gold. And what it is, Malawi Gold, uh, 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 I have it with THCV and I have it with, with uh, the one that, that gives you the munchies. But okay. basically, I, do, I give it to people who have neurological diseases. Oh, so is because, that the one you were talking about then, Joe? Yeah. I ah, it's Malawi, because I was thinking it sounds just like Malawi. <laughs> exactly. The, the, and I use it, and, and uh, I bred it to my OG. So now it has a real big bud. You know, a Malawi gold plant, if you get a couple ounces off of it, you're lucky. When I bred it to, to my OG, now it produces huge buds. Actually, the Africans like my Malawi OG better than their own Malawi, because if you've ever been in a field in Malawi, uh, 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 it's not that impressive. Because <laughs> yeah, people there, they don't have, they don't know growing techniques. But when you do run into people who have, who know growing techniques, man, that stuff becomes beautiful. But my Malawi, because I, I OG, I have 11, o, I have a uh, an OG that I, that I got, that I did. I, I bought a, uh, I got a uh, San Fernando Valley, beautiful female, and I bred it to a lemon joy that I got from Canada. And then what I did is I bred it forward and I bred it back to the original mother. I bred it forward and I bred it back to the original mother until I got the original San Fernando Valley plant again. And once it's like F8, once, once it gets to that point, it, it looked exactly like San Fernando Valley OG, but it had a lemony flavor. And so that's what I use to breed when I, when I, especially with Africans, I use this, that line to, to, uh, to make a better, a bigger bud structure. Okay. Yeah. Because the Malawi gold is a very airy, uh, it's not a very dense flower at all, but I found it super resinous, super psychoactive and energetic and, if you smoked it in the dark, you know, you could almost, you could see. So it had that, that visual aspect of, uh, oh, yeah. people talk about trippy weed. I've never really got it. But the closest thing I would say is Malawi, where it, you do actually see sort of like, if it's dark, as I say, it's almost like green little traces of visuals. <laughs> i tell you what, the, 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 the red Congo, the Angola red are incredible. They're real yeah. psychedelic. They're much uh, stronger. They're in the 24 to 30, uh, 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 cannabinoid profile range nice so the so yeah so the they they have been going around uh uh mixing their their skunk genetic when it, with wherever they go our john with this with his strain hunters you see them handing out seeds to the african tribes while they're taking while they're taking the original land races out so what do you think of that guy then i mean he's a piece of shit he, at, at, at the at Todd McCormick's expo, the THC expo, the only one that that ever happened, uh, Arjun paid Todd McCormick to to not for me not to be able to be at that show. <laughs> they they I had three booths at that show with Reinhard Delft, and they they threw me out of that show because they didn't want me talking. They don't the Dutch don't want me talking. They offered me they invite Dronker through. To Lawrence uh, Chernak, another phony piece of shit. Oh, the hash book guy, yeah. The hash. He ne he never been to a hash producing country. He got those <laughs> photos from because he worked. It was working at High Times, and he got copies of those photos and the information from High Times, and came out with that book. No way. Yeah, that's all phony <laughs> shit. The, those photos were taken oh. by were taken by Victoria Larson and John Chick. Victoria Larson, uh, uh, her boyfriend was Big Big Mick, who worked for for uh, uh, Howard uh, Howard Marks. Yeah, and yeah. How, he was Howard Marks's man in Asia, and he, she was hooked up and and with a uh, 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 tour. Victoria, she opened up the first discotheque in Kathmandu in 1972 or 71. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, she, if there was ever a king of Nepal, she definitely was the queen of Nepal. <laughs> and so, uh, 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 you know, she was my last wife. 
and she died about 15, 16 years ago. And after she died, I, I said, well, I, I'm never going to get anything better than that. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I I really haven't had any I haven't you know I haven't I haven't found a replacement or even tried to find a replacement because you can't replace her. I, I there were times when Victoria she she used to work for the Brotherhood as well the Brotherhood of Love, yeah, of eternal love and and I always used to say you know why don't you tell me some of those Brotherhood stories and, and let me know and she and she would never ever talk to me about anything she did with the Brotherhood when she died those secrets died with her. And that's the kind of person that she was. Uh, everybody loved her. There's not one person who would ever say that she was a, did bad to anybody. You know what I mean? Everybody trusted her, everybody loved her. And when, when she was dying, uh, uh, people were coming from all over just to say goodbye to her because she'd, she'd helped so many people in her life. You know what I mean? And so, uh, 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 so she knew a lot of secrets. And so uh, uh, the Brotherhood worked out of Kathmandu uh, as well when they got thrown out of Afghanistan. And when they, when they got thrown out of Afghanistan, uh, uh, they had uh, NBC or CBS news photographers crash, breaking down, uh, uh, busting the, the Brotherhood house in Kandahar, wherever they were, or in Kabul, in Pogman or whatever. And uh, 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 James, Sunshine James, uh, 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 the 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 Afghani police let him jump out the back door, and he and, and he made it out. They never busted any Brotherhood people, but they were there to bust the Brotherhood. You know, it was a it was a big a thing. You know, but it didn't come off as well as they wanted because the Brotherhood. You know, they had they, they had lots of money, man. Police and those days, police weren't making much money. You know, the if they bust you, you give them a lot of cash, you're out the door. And that's what happened with him. In fact, I, I knew somebody who smuggled James into Pakistan. And then from Pakistan, they smuggled him into India. And then he was in India. He got back. Well, he had a Canadian passport anyway. So once he was in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Pakistan, he had a Commonwealth passport. He was cool. Well, this is sort of the thing I'd like you to tell us in um, an episode. This is what I was saying earlier about that. Not many people might know your history in Nepal and all of that side of things. Yeah, um, the, the, basically, we'll, we'll keep it at, at, at Watson, the damage that he's done. Uh, and, well, yeah. I was also going to ask you about Todd McCormick, because yeah. he's obviously still active right now, selling seeds. He sells his skunk one. Um, what do you think his agenda is? Do you think he's actually in the employee of a certain group or uh alphabet agency for example i don't know well no well he's working with with watson and and Connolly clark because they in their in their ma uh in their grow magazine they actually came out and invent and, and this is what they said uh, you know let, let's just get past this subject law enforcement did work with uh uh, uh officials you know that that he, that uh, that scientists work with officials to to, to uh, qualify, find out where the loads and what the quality of the loads were coming from. Yeah, and that was their job. So we've got worked, we've got worked. Sam's a Fed. We've got Todd's probably a Fed. We've yeah. got Jorge Cervantes possibly on the wrong side. Yeah, uh, well, he's on Ben Dronker's side. Dutch yeah. marketing fraud. He's it, the sounds, one. it sounds like all the well-known people who become sort of faces and figures within the community, it almost seems like they're all planted for nefarious purposes. What about, say, uh, Mel Frank? Do you know anything about him? I Joe? could have been one of those. I could have been one of those people because they, they invited me to the castle. Lawrence Shernack invited me to the castle and uh, 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 I didn't take the bait because, you know, there's no way I'm going to, you know, the Dutch one, they said they offered me my book uh, printed in every language, you know, yeah. endorsement deals, all that stuff. If I would just go along with your scam. And what about Ed Rosenthal? Ed Rosenthal is, a, is a, the biggest fraudster that there is on that scene. He's yeah. definitely in the pay of Ben Dronkers. He's definitely being, he's part of the fraud. You know, I'll tell you, 
we, there was a guy there, Ray Kogo. Ray Kogo came to, would you, would you, would you, let me get straighten this out about Ray Kogo. Ray Kogo went, went to Amsterdam and, and got partnered up with Neville. They opened up a, a he had, they had a, 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 a shop. They had, they had a, a, a coffee shop and they, and, and, and then Neville had his Sensi Seeds. Neville had Sensi Seeds. He was the first that had Greenhouse. But when Neville got busted, stopped in, in, in Australia, you know, nobody would help him. Only Ben Dronkers. And then ben, ben Dronker pulled his help out. So he, uh, uh, he couldn't get the support he needed to get out of jail. So if he got out of jail, he, could, he had a, a, a Dutch passport. He could leave on another passport because he was a Dutch and an Australian citizen. So the, 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 he sold a Sensi Seed Bank to Ben Dronkers. So Ben Dronkers bought Sensi Seed Bank and then he became the owner of the castle, of the cannabis castle. And then when, when Neville did come back and get, get out of Australia and come back to Amsterdam, he himself started to work for Ben Dronkers. Ben Dronkers is a a, 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 a cutthroat, he, you know, I just can't even tell you how cutthroat and what he'll do uh, 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 to protect the, you know, the probably billion, hundreds of millions of dollars that guy has made. I don't know if he's a billionaire yet, but I wouldn't be surprised, you know? And so he's the one, he's the one that, that, that's really in the back of Dutch marketing fraud. He's the one that, 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 that pays the publishing. He's the one that puts the information out. He's the one that controls the information. You know, uh, uh, 12 and one photo periodism, it's biology 101. All these kids, they all went to college. They all took biology. They, they should have just opened up their biology book before they bought, before they bought any of those grow books or grow information from, from the Dutch scene or from even high times. So, you know, uh, 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 the, the Dutch scene has made billions and billions of dollars on misinformation of cannabis. And here's an example. I'll ask a guy, I'll say, you know, what is Sensimia? And I grew up with Sensimia. All the weed that I used to smoke from the very beginning was uh, mostly Sensimia. And so he said, well, it's, that's pop. With, that's marijuana without seeds. I said, okay, that's marijuana what's without seeds. But what really is it? What, what, what are they talking about? And they don't know the answer. They don't know the answer that once you separate a real male from a real female, the female goes into overdrive producing resin in the hopes and anticipation that it's going to get pollinated that it's never going to get. That's a medical plant. You cannot get a medical plant from feminized seeds they never see a male they never see a male so you never have that that sense of me uh, uh, effect and then i ask kids <laughs> i <laughs> these kids are, are are running on wrong information and now it's like decades later two decades later that they've been passing on this information it took me it took like years and years for me to break through the dutch marketing fraud information and the only thing was was that uh, uh, that I did was that paradigm of twelve and one, you know? So everything that everything that you read, that all the lights, the information they give about lights, the information they give about this, the information they give about that, is all bullshit. So Kogo, he came to to Holland, got hooked up with with Neville, and Kogo had one formula, was which was the NASA formula for growing vegetables in outer space. The NASA paid universities a tons of money to find out how they could grow vegetables and grow food in outer space. And so they came up with a formula, a, 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 a nutrient formula, and they hydroponics, they was gonna grow hydroponically in outer space, and they were gonna use LEDs. All that's information that came out of six, the 60s from the NASA projects about growing, growing in outer space. So he brought that, that, that formula to Holland, that, that, that formula won the original cups at, at, in, at, at, at that high time through, through the original cups that they won in Amsterdam, that were won in Amsterdam were all used growing Kogo's formula. What the Kogo, what the, what Dronkers did is have Kogo's formula uh, 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 analyzed and then they came out with 
12 different products based on Kogo's one part formula. You know, you go, you go to a, 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 a place to buy a nutrients for your tomatoes. You don't buy 18 boxes of different shit. You buy one <laughs> box of tomato food. But they, now, now you need, you, now you need CalMag. Now you need this one. Now you, you know what I mean? You need yeah. all these products, you know, that basically should be coming in one. You know, okay. so that's one thing that the Dutch have done. Uh, now you need, a, you know, it, it, it's a joke what they've been able to do because they control the narrative. And, the, and basically, when I spoke to Reinhard Delp and he created the light depth paradigm, I said, why are you calling it light depth? This is photoperiodism. This is photoperiodic control. Call it that. Let's teach these people. He said, no, the, these Americans can't handle that kind of information. What they need is something simple. <laughs> and that was the Dutch attitude. That's the European attitude about our education and what we know and what we don't know. They look down on us. <laughs> you know, they look down on us. So uh, that that control of the mis of information and, uh, and media and, and cannabis information by Ben Dronkers was really hard for me to break through. They've threatened me twice. I went to I went to Uruguay. I was threatened in Uruguay. I was being sponsored by by that guy. That but he was also sponsored by Hesse, and the Hesse guy said, "No, hey, don't don't play this guy up. Only we're you're working with us, right?" So I didn't get the attention that I thought I was going to get. And I walked around and saw everything that was being sold in Uruguay, and they were selling equipment from the 90s that they could that they didn't sell that had been warehoused from the 90s they were selling it to the uruguayans and the people down in south america because they want to bring you in slowly yeah they want to bring you in slowly there was no leds there there was you know it was like a joke i, I walked around and said man i haven't seen that in 15 years i haven't <laughs> seen that since forever and that's how the Dutch is. That the first thing that the Dutch do, you know, again, I'm going to say this one more time. When I go to Jamaica, I don't want to smoke Dutch tree. I want to smoke Kali. I want to smoke lamb's bread. I want to grow. I want to smoke the indigenous marijuana that grows from in, Hawaii, in, in Jamaica that was brought over from African seeds. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's what I grew up. I sold a lot of that stuff. The, there's one guy named Soma. You know Soma? You've heard yeah, of Soma? I know Soma. Well, he was the informant on the a Coptic church bus. That guy, well, he was a heroin addict at the time. Uh, the, the Coptic church were one of the biggest uh, a Colombian marijuana groups in history. You know, they they they, had, they were moving a five hundred thousand pounds at a you know at times. A lot of weed, a lot of yeah. weed. Coptic church. And uh, uh, they uh, they had houses on Palm Island. These they got really rich, and they had, they infiltrated it with Soma, and Soma brought the the Coptic Church down. When I exposed him in Amsterdam, he confronted me, and I told him to smoke some hash. <laughs> you know, uh, I told the truth about you. So what, bitch? You know, and so uh, uh, he paid uh, Soma. Pay, offered high times ten thousand dollars to get me thrown out of the cup, the nineteenth cup in Amsterdam. Offered ten thousand dollars. I had a prime booth. They offered me ten thousand dollars to to uh, offer them ten thousand. Throw this guy out, right? So I exposed a lot of people. They, uh, when when Soma came to Oregon, so much Soma Soma came to Oregon because it's a big growing area, and they have like a a a. a uh, 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 a banana belt that's really a, a, a great place to grow in Oregon, the weather. So yeah. he came there and, 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 and started setting up grow shops and started uh, doing this. And, and then everybody went down but him and he disappeared with the seeds from Oregon and went to, and went to Amsterdam and, 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 and created Soma Seeds. All the while with this big fake peace and love hippie image. Oh yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, I don't want to sound like a racist, but yeah. 
the the <laughs> the 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 uh it's almost the biggest joke that there is that anybody can believe him is unbelievable <laughs> to me but i expose them and then and uh, 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 people thought, oh, so much, so great, so much, so great. What was great were the people that were growing in 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 uh, in, uh, in in uh, in Oregon. Uh, you know, in the in the eighties, uh, in the in in the seventies and eighties, I had a huge warehouse. I was working. I was, you know, needless to say, mobbed up. Uh, uh, I had big responsibilities. You know, and we used to collect seeds. Of all our, you know, from Jamaican, from the really good Colombian, from the really good Thai seeds. And we would give them to farmers that we knew at Hayes, Kansas, at the University of Kansas. Their kids, kids that were going to school there, their fathers owned hundreds of acres of corn. And it's a whole, the whole state is one is where they grow all the corn in America, that in Nebraska. And so we used to give them the seeds and uh, uh, they would grow it in between the corn in between the rows of corn and so what they would would they would cut down the plants uh, uh before they cut down the corn so the stuff was always seeded right so i had like about i i think it was either 28 or 32 pounds of this completely seeded weed man but it smelled like diesel fuel it smelled like you soaked a the the weed and gasoline it, sm it smelled like cat piss it smelled like dog shit and I said, man, who, who, who's going to buy this shit? I took it to Northern California and I sold it to some growers that I know out there. And they paid me 2,200 bucks a pound for that seeded shit. And I, I couldn't believe it because I couldn't sell it. I couldn't give it away. These guys paid 2,200 bucks. They, uh, 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 uh. That's where the uh, diesel, that's where that sour diesel, that's where all that comes from, from those seeds. So years later, I'm doing a show in, uh, I forget where, maybe, I forget the show I was doing, but I was doing a show, and there was a guy named there, Chemdog. He'd written a, he'd written a story about how he discovered Chemdog from, a, from Bag Seed in Crested Butte, Colorado. Well, that was my, that was a place I was living in. I ran that, I, well, I, I ran the scene in Colorado. And so that seed, that, 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 that seed, Seeded, uh, uh, seeded weed he got from us that we were selling in, in uh, uh, locally, selling locally. So we, uh, we were doing a show and he showed up at the show. I'm chem dog. I'm chem dog. I'm chem dog. I had, I had no idea who was going to be there, but at that show, you know, I, I had grown some chem dog, two different kinds. And, and, uh, I had thousands of seeds. So everybody who came to my booth, I just gave free chem dog seeds away and, this guy heard about it and pissed him off. Who are you to come uh, uh, selling my strain? I said, you're a strain, dude. <laughs> I said, dude, I'm the guy you got the shit that seed from in fucking Crested Butte, punk ass. And let me tell you something as well, Joe. I bet back in the day, some of the things you came across were to use like a modern tip were much louder than Chemdog is, right? Yeah. Much more, much more fucking intense aromas and terpene profiles, even than Chemdog, yeah? Oh, yeah. Without oh, doubt. Yeah. Yeah, they, because I'm not they, joking, they, Joe. What you mentioned is so interesting. When you said the ammonia, the, the cat piss, the uh, dog shit, that's all what's in my, um, the, the, yeah, it's all what's in my, my genetics now. They, they've basically, they're really dominant in skunk spray, skunk carcass, rotting death and like flesh odors, dog shit, vomit, ammonia, burnt rubber, um, and a whole lot of, like, like people say, is a lot of like garbage juice. If you even come across one that's like just identical to cocaine, Joe. The only thing that I find that's identical to cocaine or the speed is some of these speedy Hawaiian, uh, uh, African strains. One hit and you're off to the racist. I'm talking like the smell, the terpenes, the, the aroma, and even the taste to extent, but like the aroma. There's like in the packs I've got out now. Now, well, quite often there's a, a one that comes up. It's like acetone, ether, or straight cocaine, really. Or 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 or, or kerosene. It smells like kerosene. Yeah, or... this kerosene comes up. There's diesel ones. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's from that whole batch of seeds that came from Kansas. But I'm telling you, all that I've just described isn't that much more 
potent and pungent in the aroma than what chem is. To me, chem is the watered down version of all those back in the day that you had. Oh yes, not only that, I tell you the 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 skunk. Uh, I I uh, I bought a load uh, uh, a load from a place. It's called what the hell? It's in Arkansas. It's a uh, it's a famous place, Hot Springs, Arkansas. It was a famous mob place that where Bob used to go there to hide out in the nineteen twenties and stuff. Al Capone used to go there, and kind of stuff, and and for to you know to hide out and just to relax. Uh, I got some the originals, what I consider skunk. It was so potent and so uh, the the uh, the, uh, uh, the smell you couldn't get rid of the odor. If 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 you had it in your pocket, it smelled like you'd been sprayed by a skunk. That stuff you could you had a you know you you couldn't open a bag around the other bag because then every you'd have to clean everything up again. It was hard, hard to cover up that smell. That stuff. If you got it on your clothes after you harvested, it, it you couldn't get it out either. Yeah, it was um, impossible. The, the 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 I was I sold it in New York. It was like the late seventies. You know, uh, it was before I went back to Nepal in eighty one. It was the late seventies, and I sold it in New York for a hundred bucks an ounce. And I couldn't fu- and, and wait for me. Pounds were sixteen hundred. I couldn't believe I got that much for it. I, you know, Thai was going for two thousand, over two thousand. Hawaiian was going the really, really good Hawaiian back in the day was going for three seventy five an ounce, no matter how many ounces you bought. So that's like sixty four hundred a pound back in the day. How strong was that shit? That shit was so strong you could take a hit and pass it to your girlfriend, and she'd be toast. <laughs> That kind, of, that shit. I mean, uh, uh, I haven't seen anything close to that. I haven't seen anything close to the tie. And I, uh, so, so when I see these kids and they all come up to me, they they all think that because they've gotten all this knowledge that uh, uh, that they think that they're fucking superior growers. And I just ask them one question, put them right in their place. Joe, are you in a position no to clue. start growing outdoors soon this year? They have no, they have no clue about growing. They really don't have a clue about growing. They've never no. picked up a horticultural book in their life. The only book that they ever they ever picked up is a High Times book or something written by Cervantes or Ed Rosenthal. Are you growing outdoors this year at all, uh, Joe? Yeah, I'm. I'm growing. I have a. a hold on one second. I'm growing a. I, I have a. I've been working on a THCV line. Uh huh. The THCV line that I uh, I was back in Malawi a couple years ago, and so I, I the THCV line uh, I bred to my other Africans, and so I put THCV into the, some of my super twenty six to twenty eight percent African lines. You know what I mean? So I I I, I expect to have a few lines of uh, uh, over thirty percent cannabinoid profile. Going to be off the hook. Uh, 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 the Willie's Reserve, that oh, company, nice. they went to a friend of mine and they got my red Congolese and they, they, they went up to him and they said, they said, uh, uh, this is great stuff. He said, but we know you didn't grow it. This has the widest cannabinoid profile of any weed we've ever tested. And they said, well, I got this from Joe at Gold Crown Seed, but he didn't pass it, pass on my number. See, my whole objective for the past decade over a decade now is to put the uh, the the uh the terpenes and put the cannabinoid pro put the, the cannabinoids back into the marijuana so you never oh, everything i sell has full cannabinoid profile doesn't yeah i don't sell anything that's strictly thc no so i mean because it don't taste the same it don't, it don't get you as high it, 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 it the flavors is no none of those all you have nowadays are berry flavored the same shit different mix berry flavored oh gelato oh do or it's all it, shit it's all crap and i want to hook you up a couple of packs of seeds though that you of mine that you can grow so i'm sure you're gonna love them i i uh, uh i'm i'm growing in greenhouses yeah, and the climate controlled greenhouses that I'm having built, and uh, basically I'm doing my THCV line, and basically my Africans. I've got something 
I, 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 I've got a plant that's an all weather plant. It's like all yeah. weather tires. It can grow through hail, sleet, and snow. Yeah, it's a it's a mix with with a Hawaiian flavor butterscotch, and that is it's an outstanding F one hybrid. It's an F one a first generation head one F one from two different land race strains. So it has a hybrid vigor that's off the hook, you know, and that Do stuff think will that, go um, anywhere. That, that it'd be perfect for England. Yeah, I've got a guy just, I thought he's a bit crazy to be honest, but I'm glad he did it because it was like interesting to see. He planted some of my skunks in October in the UK, harvested in January, and I couldn't actually believe it because, I, yeah, it's not something I would have attempted, you know, normally, but to see that he could actually grow through winter and harvest something of good quality outdoors Outside. in the UK it was as quite long amazing. As you have it heated and you have the uh, because in no, this wasn't even heated. This was really outside in nature over winter through snow, frost, everything. That's amazing. an important strain. Yeah, that's what you need to breed stuff with. Yeah, it's because it's basically it's, it's well reported all through all different climates. Really, they're just they, they're strong. They they've got such different structures to the modern varieties. They're able to withstand huge winds and yeah, they've got oh, bigger yeah. yields. Also, yeah. uh, they're resistant to PM and bugs a lot of the time. The, the you know the 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 uh, uh, what they call a uh, blueberry isn't blueberry. The the original blueberry came from a brotherhood strain. That was a brotherhood commune strain that was grown in the seventies. And and the only thing that DJ Short did was was get his hands on the genetics and 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 produce seeds from it. But he didn't. Which is very nothing. hermaphroditic. He had, he, had, he had nothing to do with creating that strain. Yeah. He had nothing to do with creating that strain at all. And he he's been confronted by by people who were there when they grew it and the grower who grew the, the original strain. Uh, 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 I don't like growing that blueberry because it's, uh, it's like a magnet for mites. Right. <laughs> you know, so yeah, have you noticed how some strains just mites love them and some strains they don't? Yeah, definitely. I've seen that's that, what, yeah. That's what, that's when the ones that don't, those are the ones you want to breed with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, you know, I run against all, I've been ripped off so much. DNA genetics. Did I speak about DNA genetics yet? No, DNA not yet. Did I? No? No, no, not yet, Joe. No, tell me about them. DNA genetics was at that 19th cup. And so was a guy called Subcool. Yeah. And 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 uh, Subcool had some good stuff. And I said, man, this is great stuff. You can win with this. But DNA had the booth next to me. And they showed me this a Martian mean green It was the worst looking shit that you've ever seen in your life. I said, man, how can you even, you know, how can you even uh, uh, present that? He said, man, I'm going to win with this. I said, how, how can you win with that? But look what this guy's got over here. I didn't know that the fix was in. They had paid 120,000 euro to rent a, a, a discotheque, right? To have a party at for high times during the, the cannabis cup event event days. So well, they, that's just like an old Argent technique, isn't it? Or Aryan, this is Dutch pronunciation. That's, that's, is, but... The Dutch have totally corrupted the scene. Yeah. They've taught a lot of people the bad things about growing marijuana. Like people who, I had one guy, he won he won a, a cup with my purple. I had a guy living in my house, ripped off my purple Urkel, uh, 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 and then bred it outside of my house. He, he moved out of my house without me knowing, and he took some, my, some of my plants, right? And uh, 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 he used that purple Urkel to win a cup. And what he did was he had he had some purple Urkel. Uh, he he used a, 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 a tumbler to tumble off the like you put a you put the really crystally buds in a tumbler for like about five ten seconds. You only get the top 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 crystals. I got pictures. I'll show you. It's beautiful. And then he took his buds and he rolled it through, rolled that on that, on those crystals and that were sticky, and then entered it, and yeah. won, <laughs> won with my strain. He would have won. Well, I, I had a friend who worked in Barney's farm in the coffee shop for a while, and he used yeah. to tell me how they used to for the Moroccan entry, they'd mix super uh, super lemon haze um, kiff with the Moroccan. 
and uh, with the Moroccan pollen and enter that as a straight Moroccan entry and it would always win. But again, that was a mixture. Well, the, the, the Moroccans are growing, uh, 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 that Moroccan hash that you see there is from Dutch seeds. The, 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 you know, and, and there was a lot of shit went down in, in Lebanon and a lot of the people that were uh, 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 growing families from Lebanon moved to, the, to Morocco. They're making some good hash. But yeah, the 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 good back, hash is good, but there's a lot of commercial shit there as well. well. The, back in the day, Moroccan was the worst hash that was available on the market. Yeah, for for a long time, it was like powdery, key, uh, 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 press resin, and, and pro, I mean, it's just garbage. And another thing that they uh, they they call keef. Keef isn't what they is what keef is. No, the, keef. What they call keef is the actual plant material has been left after beating the crystals off yeah which they chop and mix with black mountain tobacco yeah exactly that's key yeah they, they smoke in sipsies <laughs> yeah that's right yeah you know and so tell me joe what do you know about kevin jodry just to change the topic slightly kevin jodry who who is he Repressed. he's the guy in wonderland uh nursery or was in wonderland nursery in california He's a guy, to me, he's just like Sam 2.0. He's another person planted in the community for various reasons, to, oh, to my no, mind. I know who you are. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys like that. Yeah. There's a bunch of that's guys. what interests me now. Who is the modern day, basically, I call them internet personas because they make these videos. Again, they, they, you know how you said last episode, oh, if the guy smokes with you, he must be cool. Well, I think now they've upped it a notch. They've got a guy who presents himself as a grower and like he's really in with the scene and all this. But, and he makes all these videos espousing, oh, he wants the old school genetics back and he's searching for these skunks. Let me tell you, that fucking piece of shit has hidden my skunks from the community since 2018, knowing full well exactly what I've got, where they came from, the lot. And now he's working with Berner, the biggest pusher of mids fucking since the cartels. Um, what, what do you mean mids? Dog shit, mid-grade weed. Look, you know, crap. Okay, yeah. Like yeah. cookies, uh, you know. Um, Burn is the guy behind cookies, you know, that's just oh, the most overhyped dog shit strain ever to exist in my mind. But anyway, he's working with Burn and uh, he's working with Jodry now, using my skunks. Jodry's a flat-out scumbag, and I definitely think he's a fed, but I just wonder if you knew anything about him. No, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I basically stay away from people. And the oh, only time, you. the only the only time I meet people is when I do shows. I stop doing shows. I'm tired of people ripping me off, man. I've been ripped off of my Durban OG. Uh, they call it Thin Mints. Fucking DNA ripped off my my Red Hot Chili Pepper, and they're calling it Lemon Pepper because it's my it's my it's my it's my Colombian uh, black. Uh, it smells like chili peppers, man. You have a pot. It's the same thing as skunk was before, except it smells like chili peppers. And mm -hmm. I, I bred it to my, my OG line to fatten up the buds. So it has a lemony, uh, chili flavor. They call they, they got that. They got that from me from some, from, they got it from me probably directly. And now they call it lemon pepper. You know, the guy from, uh, from, uh, 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 Wild West, he got my Durban OG, he calls it Thin Mints. Now he has a whole line of stuff that's based on that mint line. You know what I mean? I have the originals, you know, I have the original genetics, you know. And so, I mean, I get ripped off so much. I mean, I, I, I finally, I, 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 you know, I, I felt victimized. So I, you know, finally I said, you know, I'm tired of being a fucking victim, man. I'm going to go back into fucking growing the best shit. And fuck everybody uh, and the seeds. I don't even, you know, I really got to know you well and know that you're you're on, you know, that you're not going to stab me in the back. And like the fucking guy from uh, uh, who who uh, was it? Uh, uh, I, I think. Uh, what about Mr. Soul? Who's Mr. Soul? Uh, C99. Oh, that's that's uh, 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 the Bro Brothers Grimm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy is full of shit, dude. He, you know, he's a he, yeah. He's a fucking asshole. He's a wife beating fucker, and um, he's an asshole. He's yeah. an asshole. You know, and, <laughs> you, know you know that 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 that's that C ninety nine is a is a 
a, a variant from uh, from Jack Herrera. I think it's the first hype strain, to be honest. It's the first thing everybody raved about when, when you actually smoked it. You felt like this is mediocre. But, it, but yeah, it's a mid-grade weed. But, you know, uh, the flowering time is fast. Yeah, it's quick. It smells it's nice. Quick, but... It smells nice. And, you know, so uh, to, uh, a lot of people have bred into that. You know, he he I met him at a show. I went over. It was nice to him. But then he then he found out who I was. He never talked to me, I, but I could before. <laughs> then he now he hates me because now he's in with the Dutch. He's part of yeah. Dutch fraud. Yeah, Dutch. Those guys that made money selling that bullshit are coming back to sell that bullshit again, and people don't even realize they're not getting what they pay for. You know how the hell if you're selling seeds, how the hell can you tell the difference? between a feminized seed and a non-feminized seed. So in other words, uh, 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 they, could have, they could have feminized seeds and they could be selling as, uh, as feminized and they could be selling them as, as, as uh, originals and it's the same shit. Yeah. They're only selling feminized seeds. They're not yeah. putting anything out that you could, that had, that's really male and female for true. Well, he's using my genetics for sure at the moment in some of his lines. Yeah, my stuff is all pure. That's why, and because of it, I've become a victim too many times. You know, I, 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 it pisses me off. I, I read that cookies, a uh, uh, company sold for a hundred million. What the? No, fuck? it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. Not it's only that, that by German poison. If you yeah. look at, if you go to Philos, and 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 uh, and. Uh, 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 and look at my uh, gold crown seeds, and you go there. Look at my the, my profile on on Durban Poison, my that I had DNA sequence. It's a top in the world, bro. They're doing exact same thing with me right now. Berners uh, and that prick Jodry uh, using my genetics to, well, they're going to be using my genetics to basically, you know, put with cookies or to be the next thing cookies bring out, you know. Yeah. That's what they're doing. That's why I asked you about Jodri, because the guy's just a piece of shit. I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I have a young partner, and he must know this guy. I, 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 I stay off of the scene because I'm tired of being fucking ripped off and attacked. You know, I, I, at the at the Cup in Boston, uh, 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 I was I was sitting there talking to some people. And Danny Danko of High Times was there. He said. Oh, he, this guy's a snitch. He snitched everybody out in Colombia. I never even been to Colombia, dude. I'm a I'm a hash dealer from Southeast Asia. What the fuck are you talking about? And he was talking like that in front of a, a bunch of people, you know. And I said to him, I said, I don't know what you. What are you talking about, man? I, I, Colombia? I'm from fucking Southeast Asia. I'm the king of the paw, baby. That, that, you know. And then and he kept going at it, and I went off on him. I uh, I I hit him so hard that you know. And I've, I've found, unfortunately, much to my disappointment since uh, sort of well, let me finish involved, you this but... story so you get a laugh and then you can talk. Uh, <laughs> I'm old. If you interrupt me, I forget. So, anyway, yeah. I punched him out. He, he just slinked away. You know, I thought something was going to come out of it. What came out of it was they threw me out of the Canacon. And so the next day I couldn't sell. I was having the best day I've had. And the next day I couldn't show because I punched Danny Danko. That oh, I'm really glad you did that. That, that week they called me back and they said, Joe, we saw we 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 saw the video. If it would have been us, we would have smacked them. You're back in. You know what I mean? So uh, uh, high times, uh, 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 normal, the Dutch marketing fraud, hoarder farm, all those are the enemy. Yeah. They've been the enemy for a long time. They're planned enemy because they've been trying to control the genome. The, the, the reason that they made marijuana illegal and they only could keep it for 80 years is, a, is that uh, they're waiting for the science to catch up to it. Now that the science has, has come up to it, you, they have CBG, CBN, CBD, you know, they have it all separated. That's all yeah. due to, to hoard a farm and 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 Watson and Robert Connolly Clark. If, if if you call anybody the enemy of the cannabis, those two have done more damage to Mother Nature's cannabis than any two in the world. 